What's up everyone? Sam here from ByteByBite.com and in this video I'm going to talk about how to develop habits that make coding interview prep actually enjoyable. So we're going to talk about how to develop a very specific habit that's going to allow you to prep for your interviews consistently, make that a process that you don't absolutely hate, and make it so that you don't have to rely on willpower to get this done every day so that you can ultimately land that dream job. And if you want more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified every week when we release new videos just like this. So before we can get into how to actually make a consistent and great habit for our coding interview prep, we have to actually talk about what creates a habit. What does that process actually look like? And here I want to share with you the habit loop. And this comes from the book Atomic Habits, which is a great book that you should check out about habits. And this basically defines the process that a habit follows. So when we do something habitual, it always starts with a cue. It starts with something that actually makes us think about that habit, makes us want to do that. And a simple example of this might be, let's say that I have a habit that every day from when I come home, I make a snack for myself. So that cue would be me arriving at home. And then that cue is followed by a craving. The craving is the thing that I associate with that cue. So once I get home or as I'm walking home, I might start to salivate because I'm thinking about that snack that I'm ultimately going to be having. Next, I take some sort of I make some sort of response, right? I actually go and make myself the snack. And then finally, there is a reward, which is that I get to eat that popcorn, I get to eat those chips, I get to eat whatever I'm having as a snack. And so this is a really simple example of what a habit actually looks like. But the good thing about this, because this is not super interesting in and of itself unless you're really interested in habits, but what's great about this is that this is actually going to allow us to create habits. Because what we can do with this is we can hack this cycle and use this cycle to develop something that we want to be a habit into a habit. And all we have to do is we have to optimize each of these things for the thing that we are trying to make habitual. And so in this video, I want to show you exactly how we can do this for interview prep. So the first thing that we have to do is update our queue. And the big thing with a queue is that we want to make this habit obvious. We want to make it obvious to ourselves somehow that we are going to be starting to do this habit, that we are going to start to do the thing that it is that we want to do. And so in the example of our queue here, if we want to prepare for our coding interviews, what might this look like? Maybe we put a copy of Cracking the Coding Interview on our desk. And that way, when we wake up in the morning, we see Cracking the Coding Interview, and it makes it super obvious to us that now is the time to prepare for our interviews. So the cue would be, I wake up and I see cracking the coding interview. Another example might be that I have my calendar and I'm going to schedule it onto my calendar for every day. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to put this on my calendar for each day of the week and I'm going to set a reminder for myself. And by setting that reminder, there is no way that I can miss that I am supposed to prepare for my interviews. Because the easiest way to fall off track with a habit is I'm sure we've all done this, you get into bed at night and you're like, crap, I was supposed to do that thing, right? I was supposed to do that habit, whatever it was, and I'm already in bed and there is no way I'm getting out of bed to do it. And so we want to absolutely avoid that happening and that is where the cue comes in. The next part of our habit is making it attractive, creating that craving for the habit. And this is something that might sound next to impossible with coding interviews, right? This coding interviews are not exactly the most fun thing in the world. And it's not necessarily something that we want to prepare for on a daily basis. So finding a way to make ourselves crave preparing for the coding interviews, not so easy. But what we can do is we can make it less painful. We can make it more attractive than it is now. We can make it attractive. And how do we do this? Well, there are a bunch of ways that we can do this. One of my favorite ways to do it is to combine this with something that we actually like. So we could combine it with like music or a snack or something else sitting in our favorite chair. And what we can say is we can relegate ourselves to only doing these things while we are doing our interview prep. 
And so maybe I say, I have some favorite album that I want to listen to, but I'm only going to listen to that album when I am in fact preparing for my interviews. That's going to make me actually crave preparing for my interviews. An example for me personally is that I really like listening to audiobooks. And so I like to find a book that I'm really interested in, and then I'm trying to get more exercise. And so I go out for a walk every day, and I put the book on while I'm going for my walk, but that's the only time that I'm able to listen to the book. So if I really am like in a juicy part of the book and I want to get to that next part, I have to go for a walk. And so this is a great example of something where it's really simple to combine it with something else that is going to make that more enjoyable. Some other things that we could do, we could gamify it or create some competition. We could do our prep with a friend and say, okay, well, whoever can solve this problem faster gets a prize. We do lots of stuff like that. But the third thing that I want to suggest as well is a mental reframe and actually change your mindset to find enjoyment in the challenge of preparing for your interviews. This is something where if you can do this, if you can shift the way that you are approaching your interview prep, if you can shift the way that you think about this, it's going to dramatically change how you live your life generally because we tend to think about things as being fixed, right? We tend to think about things where our mindset is fixed the way that it is and things just are the way they are. This thing always sucks. But that is a very limiting mindset. That's a, very, that's a mindset that is going to limit us from really living up to our full potential. And so if you can shift your mindset and say, okay, well, I may not enjoy this, but I am going to appreciate and enjoy the challenge of it, then that is a great way for you to shift and develop that craving. Now, step three, we come to the response. And the response, all we have to do is make it as easy as possible for ourselves to actually do this habit, right? So we have to make it as easy as possible for ourselves to prepare for our interviews. And this is something where maybe what we wanna do in this case is pick something that is so easy that we can't not do it, even if that is not the most effective way for us to prepare in the long term. So I wanna give you an example of this. I wanna give you a couple examples of this. Imagine that you wanted to get ready to, that you wanted to get in the habit of going to the gym. The simplest way to do this and a way that many experts have recommended is you get up, you put on your gym clothes, you walk out the door, and then you come back home. You don't actually go to the gym at all, but you're developing this first part of the cycle, right? You're developing that cue, that craving, and that response that ultimately, once you do get that to be habitual, it makes it easy for you to go to the gym. So obviously you're not gonna get fit doing that, like not actually going to the gym, but it helps you to develop that habit that you can then use in the longer term. The same way we can do this with our interview prep. So what if you said, okay, every day, I'm going to pick one easy leak code problem and I'm gonna solve it. That's not super difficult. You could even go even simpler and say, well, every day I'm gonna sit down at my desk with the intention of preparing for my interview. And then just go off and do something else. You're still developing this habit. You're still building things up so that eventually you're gonna to have to build on that, right? Like you can't leave it there, but that is a good starting point. And that's what we're really talking about here. We're not talking about finalizing everything. We're not talking about the be all end all. We're talking about developing that habit. Another thing that you can do that I really like is called the five minute rule. And this is a great way to deal with procrastination because the five minute rule says, I'm going to commit to sitting down and doing this thing for five minutes. I don't have to do more than five minutes. If I'm not feeling it, I can get up after five minutes and do something else. But you allow yourself to keep going if it's something that you are enjoying, if it's something that you feel like you're making progress. And so what it does is it breaks through that like activation energy that it takes to get started doing something and can be a really valuable tool. The last thing I'd recommend here is planning things out in advance. If you plan things out in advance, then doing the thing when it comes time to do it becomes really easy, right? Because you don't have to think about what is it that I'm gonna do. So often I see people, they sit down at their desk and they're like, okay, what am I gonna do today? And you don't have to do that. You don't wanna do that. You just wanna be able to sit down and do the thing. And so by planning out in advance, it makes this response a whole lot easier. And finally, we get to talk about the probably most fun step here, which is to make things rewarding. And so in our reward section, we want to find a way to both make accomplishing our habit rewarding and ideally make doing the habit itself a reward, right? So if we can't figure out a way to make doing the habit itself a reward, 
it's still something that we can combine a reward with. We talked a little bit about this here with the craving, right? We do these things that make it fun. Now with our reward, we could add a reward afterwards. After completing the habit, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do the other thing. I'm gonna you know, have something, I'm gonna have a piece of chocolate, I'm gonna get to do something that I enjoy, I'll watch an episode of a TV show, go out to dinner. Like You can think about tons of different ways and this is a really personal thing, what the reward is. But coming up with some reward, and it often feels stupid to me, right? It feels stupid because these rewards feel so small, but there is something really powerful about just boxing things and saying, okay, I did this and therefore I got this reward no matter how small that reward was. So highly recommend adding some sort of reward here. The other thing that you can do to make the actual process more rewarding is something called the Seinfeld technique. And this I love because this is a strategy that Jerry Seinfeld used when he was trying to get better at writing jokes. And what he would do is he had this giant wall calendar. He had this giant wall calendar that was like, you know, all 12 months every day. And then what he would do is every day he set himself a goal of writing one joke. And when he wrote the joke, he would exit off on the calendar. And every day he would write a joke and he would exit off on the calendar. And what you can see is that the longer you go, the more that you X them off on the calendar, the more you want to maintain this streak, the more satisfying it is every time you mark off on the calendar. And so what you can do is by doing this, you get into this point where like you've been going for a month or something and you do not want to break that streak. So the Seinfeld technique is a really great way to just get consistent by seeing yourself building that progress. It's the same thing when you look at things like Alcoholics Anonymous and they give out those, you know, chips, right? Where they say, oh, you've been sober for this long? Here, have a chip. The longer you make it, the more powerful of an incentive that is to keep going. And so this is a really great way to reward yourself. And with that, that's all I got for you today. Remember, if you can follow this, you can use this habit loop to develop habits, and this is going to make it more fun for you. It's gonna make it more enjoyable for you to stick to the things that you're trying to do. It's gonna make it more enjoyable for you to develop that interview prep habit. You can start slow, you can start easy, but as you build it up, having this habit and not having to depend on willpower anymore is gonna make a huge difference in your ability to actually prepare for your interviews and not be like forcing it and struggling every single day. So I highly encourage you to try this out. I appreciate you joining me here. If you want lots more advice on coding interviews and how to prepare, go to bitebybyte.com slash masterclass and check out our free coding interview masterclass. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe. Thank you for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.